Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the top deck. The top deck meaning it won the Pro Tour Amaket. So expect to see a lot of zombie decks in your FNM. This is Gary Thompson's version of Mono Black Zombie. We also saw Aetherwork Marvel put up four decks in a top eight, and we saw some version of zombies, either a mono black, two mono blacks, and a mono black with a splash of white. So I guess heavily black with a splash of white. But this is the deck that won the game. It is a lot more consistent than a for work Marvel, where if you spin it and you do not hit your big creature, you will lose the game. So let's talk about what the deck is and as well as the fact that the deck is incredibly cheap. What I was expecting to see, I was expecting to see some version of red deck wins with the glory bringer that did not produce itself in the top eight at least. And Gideon, Gideon, the very, very hyped Gideon of trials pretty much was a no-show and the entire Gideon decks were there were four copies of Gideon in the top eight, but outside that, not much else. I'm pretty happy with the new format. A for Work Marvel is still going to be kind of annoying. And I believe it plays one card from Amaket, which I was told was Magma Spray. But this deck is relatively new. It uses Liliana's Mastery, which is surprisingly good. Free double black. This card has gone up in price. Every card that I'm showing you has already gone up in price. They were incredibly cheap, sub 50 cents bulk cards until recently. The deck is still cheap. Monocolor decks that do not need special lands tend to be way cheaper. Special lands are $5 a land, right? And let's say you need for a two color deck, maybe you need eight special lands or six of them. And those will be run you $30. This deck only runs the West Vale Abbeys as the finisher. But takes a lot of cards that used to be bulk and makes them valuable. So if you open product and you held on to the zombies from Innistrad and Eldritch Moon. You would be pretty much set with the deck. Because the deck doesn't run anything atypical from just those zombies. I am very surprised to see Zombies be a top one deck. I'm more surprised to see that it's a monocolor deck. And it's still relatively cheap. It will be very good. Perhaps it gets even stronger with Hour of Devastation. And that's what I like about it. It's a cheaper deck than typical decks. It's a monocolor deck, so you don't need to worry about getting the wrong colors of mana. And it is a zombie creature deck, so it is an aggro build. So Dark Salvation is extremely good. It is from Eldric Moon. You pay 1-1 one, one in a black, you get to get a 2-2 one, one, a two, two black zombie that will be pumped up by your Lord abilities, which you have plenty of. And you get to perhaps kill a 1-1 one, one creature or a creature with the power and toughness of, I guess, minus 1 for the toughness so you can kill it. If you pay two or you pay two, two and a black, five total, you get four power spread among two bodies and you get to kill a creature with two toughness, which is pretty good. Scales incredibly well. It's exactly what you need when you need it. And you will also get the pump spells. What happened here was there was a accumulation of pump spells from Metallic Mimic uh, token creators from uh, Crypt, Crypt Breaker, Recursion, Relentless Dead, Lord of the Accursed is also a no a Lord, so you get plus one plus one. Diagraph Colossus is a card that spiked the most as a percentage. As of this recording, it's around five to seven dollars right now from bulk, and that is both it both gets plus one plus one counters, and so it could be a very big creature and it creates more zombies for every zombie you play. One of the better cards in the deck, I do like it a ton. So you have your Crypt Breaker as your one drop, your Dread Wanderer as your one drop. You have eight one drops. It looks like you have eight 
two drops, and then you have eight free drops. You have Removal and Dark Salvation, also Token Creation. You have Fatal Push, Grasp of Darkness, Liliana's Mask. I mean, it is such a simple deck to really master. It's not anything particularly com complicated. You play your one drop, you play your two drop, you play your free drop, you remove some stuff, and you recur some stuff, and you can finish off with either Westvale Abbey or Liliana's Mastery. So let's take a look at the sideboard. The sideboard is interesting. You do have free Liliana's The Last Hope. Last time I checked, she was $30, $35. But you really don't need to play that. You can just play a few, you can put two Fatal Pusses and maybe something else. Maybe another Lost Legacy, maybe another Scrap Heap Scrounger. Overall, the deck is relatively easy to understand how it wins. It is relatively easy to build it, uh, being that these are not mythic planeswalkers you're after, and you don't actually need the Lilianas of the Last Hope. You can substitute something to take its place. I fully expect to see a ton of these zombies decks running around in FNM, mainly for the fact that that's what happens every Pro Tour. I am a little bit surprised that the red decks, the red base decks did not do as good. The red god, nowhere to be seen in the top eight. Glory bringer, nowhere to be seen. The glory bringer used to be $10, $12. Now it has dropped down to seven and it's continuing to drop. The true control decks, you have Timor Aetherwork Marvel deck as a, I guess, pseudo control. But the true control decks where it is draw go still do not exist in this format. So again, quite surprising to not see any of those decks. But the large majority of your cards are, even some of your pricey cards, Fatal Puss, Grass of Darkness, the Lord of the, the Accursed, they are uncommon and they're relatively easy to get, especially if you had bought a box of Amaket, you should at least have a few copies of that. You can trade into a few more copies of it. Nothing is in the main deck is that expensive. It's over $10 as of this recording. And I don't imagine most, oh, I guess the Relentless Dead. I made a mistake. Relentless Dead has always been around 15. Now it's around 20. And that's probably the harder card to get. And it is a necessary card in the deck. But nonetheless, we're not talking about four Relentless Deads is still less than one Jace of Vin's Prodigy when that happened. So they achieved their goal of making Standard cheaper. And even the best decks are not as expensive. And that is very good because you, you don't need to play eight to 12 fetch lands, have four Jaces. The four Jaces alone, let's say they're 80 bucks, is more than this entire deck. And that is good. I think it's going to make a healthy standard. I am absolutely shocked that Gideon is not anywhere to be found in the top eight. Uh, given I just, he just looks so strong on paper, but I guess with all these zombies attacking planeswalkers and you don't have the quick removal, uh, you don't have a four drop spell like Languish, which can just destroy everything on turn four. You're reliant on them producing tokens, but because zombies produce better tokens and they are faster and they pump better, you just lose the game. Overall, a fascinating deck. I will probably build it and let you know how it goes. Very simple to, like, it's not like you have to be Gary Thompson level to play this at FNM. It's a very simple aggro deck and its basis, so, but you can keep learning. There is a learning curve and you can get better and better at the deck. However, it would be a great deck for to introduce someone to play Magic, mainly because play your zombies, play a removal, attack with your zombies, recur your zombies, play more removal, play more zombies, and there you go. That, there's the game. I'm pretty impressed. I When I saw the deck list in the top eight, I thought A for Work Marvel would be the number one deck, uh, being the fact that they had... A, they had four copies of it, and it seemed like, okay, with four copies, just like the Miracle player, Alexander Haynes, he got really lucky at his Pro Tour. But the percentages were in favor of a Miracle player winning because there were so many people playing Miracle's deck. He got really lucky, and he just so happened to be the Miracle player with the best draws. 
at the time. This feels, this is more consistent. The effort work Marvels is more like a miracle player, where if you have enough of them, one of them will probably run hot and win the gambit. Now, the I will have to say, uh, Magic is, I think this is going to help Magic Standard. This will help Magic FNM and Attendance. It is a uniquely casual deck, which we haven't seen a good one in a long time. It's a tier one deck right now. And it is a deck that most people who are newer or still learning Magic can operate easily. They're not going to be able, and they shouldn't. I mean, look at the Jace Vinge Prodigy Standard. You had four Jaces at 80 bucks a piece. Then you had multiple fetch lands in blue. So let's say they were at the time 15 to $20 a piece. You're looking at a $700 deck. An introduction player is not going to play that deck. And they're also not going to, but they're going to get beat by that deck time and time again. And that's why I never played any Jaces because I felt that was bad for new players. Because they go, like, oh, if only I had that Jace, I would have won. The no, you don't want new players to think that way, right? You want them to have every card that they need available to them. Relentless Dead is the, now I look at the deck list, uh, Lily, you don't need it. Relentless Dead, I'm sure you can replace it with another 2-drop. I'm not sure what 2-drop, but a lot of this stuff, you can probably replace it. There's a lot of, the white version of the deck runs the 1 white, 1 black, and whenever you play a zombie, you, your opponent loses 1 life, you gain 1 life. You could probably substitute that, but then you have to put in some land which is you know expensive because then you have your vents and you have your uh, black white fast land anyway overall very 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 happy with how this pro tour turned out i actually was watching the league of legends msi and man man that tsm sucks i can't support them anymore this is so bad i want to support them but i'm not going to support them anymore i'm going to pick a different team a team that does not lose to uh, every other team at an international stage. Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.